welcome or welcome back to Lost in Thought. My name is Jen and today I would like to show you how to make a Greek chitin or chitin or kitten. I'm not entirely sure how it's pronounced. Anyway, a male ancient Greek tunic. Now, unfortunately for ancient Greek archaeology, even though we've got heaps and heaps of pots, uh, bronze artifacts, iron artifacts, we have very little in the way of actual textiles. So for fabric, I really recommend, especially if this is your first ancient Greek tunic, starting off with something that they most likely would have had, which is linen, and uh, linen has been found in ancient Greek contexts, or wool. The slight problem with a lot of commercial wools nowadays is it's far too thick, it's far too heavy. You have to find a very, very light, almost tropical weight wool. The wool that we have isn't anything like what the ancient Greeks would have had. So for mine, I'm going to be using this linen. Another note just about linen, it's very difficult to dye and keep dyed very bright colours. So if you are using linen, if you are using this in a reenactment setting, try and keep the linen either a natural linen colour, like this, or a blue colour would be acceptable. If you are using it for reenactment, really, really steer away from anything that contains man-made fibres. If you're anywhere near a campfire, if any of that campfire sparks out and it lands on that man-made fibres, then instead of the fabric burning, it can melt and it can cause some serious nasty burns. So the good news about this project is it's an extremely easy piece of soft kit or costume to make. It requires zero tailoring and hardly any sewing to be honest. Uh, all you need is a big rectangle of your fabric. And as far as measurements go, if you measure from your elbow to your elbow, if your arms are stretched out like that, and double it, that is pretty much the length of fabric that you need. Now, as for the width, mine goes from just under my chin, and you can't see, but it goes to my ankles. Now, it doesn't matter if it goes to about there, or to about your thigh, because there's a couple of different types of way wearing the tunic once you've made it and if you've got narrow fabric or wide fabric you can change the way of wearing it so it suits. Just as a side note I have seen an argument made that uh, Greeks didn't sew their clothing they just use uh, fibulae or pins, bronze pins to hold them together and I'm not entirely sure if this is or is not true however if you are wearing this at a show, perhaps a family show, where children might be present, for modesty's sake, uh, in case you don't want any accidents, then I really, really recommend that you sew your kit just in case and then pop the pins in as well. So the first and only seam that we're going to sew is this big long one here that goes straight down this side of my body. From there to there. So I'm starting off with a basic running stitch all the way the over the edge and you can see I've got one edge slightly longer than the other. And then I'll just fell over to secure it. That's the sewing pretty much done. Uh, we have this tube and so if you've got this wide fabric like me that reaches again from just my neck to just above my ankle I'm going to fold the top part over and you can see this in some of the Greek imagery that we have so I'm going to fold the top bit just over to create almost this blousing effect and it shortens the fabric considerably. Uh, there we go, it goes to now just above my knee. And the top thirds here 
and here would be pinned. For this demonstration, I'm just going to use modern safety pins, but the Greeks, they did have bronze fibulae, a ancient Greek safety pin. I am going to, well, I don't think I'm going to source some. I think I'm going to make some myself. I am going to stitch this once I find the right places and let me just, there we go, much better. Now, you will need a belt. This is some tablet woven braid and either something like this or just a, a piece of fabric that you've stitched would be sufficient because this is going to blouse over the belt because it's the styling which is important. So if I tie that around that, as you'll notice, depending on which era of the Greek period you're looking at, depends on how the tunic is worn. So if you're looking at a more archaic period, the tunic's quite hiked up, so there's quite a lot of thigh showing. So for a frisky archaic look, hike that up quite a lot. For a more reserved classical look, Pull it down a bit, make sure it's about down to your knee. You'll also notice that a lot of the tunics, they have pleats in or zigzags. And this can also be achieved by the way of pulling the fabric through that belt. Also, when you wash your fabric, instead of ironing it or just give it a twist, give it a crease, that gives it lots of pleats and we can get something looking very close to the imagery that we have on vases and in statues as well. So just play around and eventually you'll find something that looks very realistic to what we have in iconography. So there we have it. One male greek tunic i hope you've learned something from this video please like comment share and subscribe thank you ever so much for joining me here today and goodbye for now